Hey YouTube, it's Tom. Time for another eclectic DIY video. And this time we're gonna do some uh, beef jerky on my smoker. So hang in there. Okay, so here's the setup. We got four pounds of top round. Actually, it was four pounds. This is how much fat I cut off of it. You don't want that on your on your jerky. So probably down to uh, maybe 375 now or something like that. But this is still partially frozen. And I'm going to try to slice it partially frozen because it slices much better than when it's all squishy and warm. So here's the ingredients for the brine. And I'll put this down in the comments. Um, the wine is for me, however. And here's my container that I'm going to um, 24 hours soak on the, on the brine. So... That's about four cups, maybe five cups of, of liquid in there, but all that's going to be displaced by the jerky, and we'll get into that. Over here, I got my slicer. Uh, it's a Krups. It's, it's nothing great. It's, it's cheapy, but boy, it works. It does a job for me. And uh, we're going to cut the, um, cut the meat about a quarter inch in, uh, in thickness, and uh, I'll get set up here, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So I've cut that piece in half. And the reason being, I don't want my, uh, we're going to cut it this way because you always want to, you always want to slice against the grain. It breaks down the fibers better uh, rather than cutting it this way. But I don't want the pieces getting too thick. So uh, it's about right. And uh, I'll take them over to the slicer. And uh, we're going to get all different sizes, but that's okay. All right, so first let's try this. There's our first few pieces. That's about, oh, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. Don't forget, it's going to shrink, so you get a lot smaller. I might want to bump this up just a tiny bit more. I'm going to go right into the brine. It's a little thicker than I look like it. Uh, that's that's pretty good. So it's about a little over an eighth of an inch. A quarter of an inch, I think, is all too much. Okay, so all done, slicing. Um, now, you can't tell how it sinks down because they're half frozen yet, and really not. There's a lot of air in there, so I'm gonna wait till it thaws out a little bit. And if I have to add more solution or brine, I will. Yikes. So then we'll just have to let that uh, sit for a while, and then we'll check it out later. Okay, so now we're midway through the next day. This has been soaking all night so what you want to do periodically is go in and kind of move things around because if you don't you're going to get uh, red spots that the marinade never gets to so just keep massaging it and then try to get everything underneath the liquid and later on tonight do our thing okay so let's get ready to rack this thing uh, I have a master belt smoker normally it takes three racks but I've made a, an additional one here out of an old one uh, and it doesn't have a slide it just lays on the bottom which I'll show you later but you got to clean these things after every time you use them you can see that uh, the corrosion, even after you clean them, is, is significant. These things will, will literally rot away if you don't clean them after every time you use them. So let's uh, get everything uh, split out here and uh, 
We'll move on. Okay, we're all set up here to go. Paper towels and the racks. One thing you want to notice is that these are kicked up. That's how they go in the machine. That's how they go in the smoker. You put them in that way, you put them in backwards. I'm not sure they'll go in or if they're going to act right, but one thing to keep in mind. I think I'm going to take these out of the container and I'm going to dab them dry. Never, ever, ever rinse it. If you rinse them, you're going to rinse all the seasoning off and they're going to really taste like crap. So uh, let me show you how we do it. Got my little grabbers. do is I'll lay them out on the paper towel like that. And we're going to grab a top piece and I'm just going to let you dab to get the water, the heavy moisture off of them. Now some guys lay them across and hang them down. Uh, I don't do that because what will happen is they'll clip together and they're going to, they're not going to, they're going to not going to smoke properly. So I always uh, lay them out and this is a, a pain in the butt process but um, we got to do it I'll probably end up speeding up the film here so you can see it faster all right so we're finishing up here and it turns out I only need three racks this time. The last time I bought a four pound um, top round, I needed the, the fourth rack, which by the way is an old um, microwave rack that I sawed off and just kind of wired here so it fit and just laid it on the bottom. And so it's a function of how much fat I had to cut off and how thick uh, you end up cutting the meat. So the next very important point is you gotta let this fester. You gotta let it sit here for at least a half an hour, 45 minutes, so it caramelizes over the top. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put it in the smoker, and I let the smoker get up to about 100 degrees. Um, and I'll put them in, and then I'll put the chips in. So when it's going from 100 to 200, you got a nice hot burner and you get a lot of smoke. And uh, I'll cover that when we get there. Okay, we're ready to start uh, um, at least wrapping our. Uh, the device is here with the foil. You can see from the last time I did it, um, this was covered with foil, but I, I took the foil off and washed it a while ago. We're going to do that to keep uh, keep uh, the uh, mess down to a minimum. So right now we're still waiting for our 45 minute uh, soak out here, dry. And uh, it smells rather pungent, but uh, to me it's kind of like sniffing roses. You may not think that, but uh, it smells pretty good. This is the main drip pan. This is going to catch all the drippings. And if you didn't do this, it'd be a mess to clean up, especially with all the heat underneath it and the caramelizing around the edges. All right, so now we're at the smoker. Smoker, make sure you see that. Um, this has not been cleaned. As often, once in a while, I do it, but I don't do it every single time. But I'm lazy, basically. Got chips. My pan deep side here. And this is where I would lay that other rack. I would lay it right on top of this, that, that rack I had made. The other one's going to one, two, and three. Okay, so we're going to get started here. It's in the high 30s right now, it's winter time, so what's going to happen is I'm going to get a lot of steam out of here. In the summertime, you'd see when everybody got uh, smoke out of there, you know it's smoke. But now you're going to have steam mixed with the smoke until the whole thing's done. So you're really not going to know that. But plug it in helps. I'm going to use hickory chips. That's usually what I use. Set my temp at 38 degrees right now. The 
I set my temp to 200. And I'm going to set my time for six hours, but it's not going to take six hours. But uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, judge when it's finished by feel, not by, by time. All right, so we're up around 122 right now. Get these puppies going. One. All right. That's it. Now. The reason I do it as 100, around 125, is I know that the heater's going to be off for another 100 degrees, so I get some good heat on the, on the chips. Ouch, it's hot. If you're smoking, they use chunks, it doesn't make any difference. I don't pre soak anything. Alright, we open our vent. And you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna see a lot of steam coming out along with the smoke. I never use more than three three uh, bales of chips. It gives you plenty of flavor. Any more than that, uh, I don't think it's gonna be unhealthy. You're gonna get benzenes and other things stuck to the meat. Uh, this uh, has gives you plenty enough uh, taste of the smoke. So we'll let it go, and I'll I'll show you what happens in the next. Next panful. Okay, it's been 45 minutes. You can see how that seems coming out of there. I think that first uh, batch of chips is gone. So, let's get some more in there. Temperature's running around 201 right now. Okay, we've been on here about three hours now. I'm going to make my first check. I doubt it's done yet, but let's put a lug out. Well, first off, spongy, no good, and it's not black yet, okay, guys. We're done. Um, I actually took a bite of this guy here, and the texture is good. Maybe a slight bit of sponge, but it is leathery. Mm. It's good. And after it sits a while, it gets even better. So, three, so it's essentially three hours. And, pardon my chewing. See what I'm talking about, about the, the drip. Now the bottom tray gets done more than the top tray. Possibly because I had the vent open wide open. It's probably not as hot as the top is in the bottom. Maybe next time I'll do it halfway. Any comments on that, uh, let me know. So I'm going to go in now and uh, let's get them off the tray. All right, so here's what they look like. You see everything's shrunk in size, of course. And uh, a little chalking on it, that's probably the salt. And as it dries, it's going to get a little bit more leathery is what we want. Because it's just a tiny bit of sponge in it yet, but I think it's perfect. So, no preservatives in this, so I refrigerate it. And you can actually freeze it. You can freeze it and have it next month if you want. So it works pretty good. But my family kills for this, so we're going to get it. And it's not going to last in the freezer for sure. So uh, we'll bag it up, put it in the fridge. Any comments, I'd appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, enjoy the video, please do.